Recently on some of my furnace videos, I got a few comments where people said that they smelled gas coming out of their vents or in one of their rooms. Oftentimes it's the mechanical room where the water heater is and the furnace is and a lot of the gas piping is. And they ask me, hey, what do we do in this situation if we're smelling some gas? And because this could be a very serious situation up to the whole entire house blowing up, I decided to make a video on this topic where I talk all about this, what natural gas is, when it's explosive, and what you should do about it if you smell it inside of your house or outside of your house. I worked for a gas company for about seven years as an appliance repair technician, mainly working on heating and air conditioning, but also the rest of the household appliances. And because it was a gas company, they also trained every single technician how to respond to gas leak calls and carbon monoxide calls. And these calls were treated with top priority. What I mean by that is, for example, if I'm on call and I'm working on a furnace at one o'clock in the morning, it's super cold outside, the temperatures in the house are dropping, I have the furnace all taken apart, I'm replacing the blower motor, and if I get a gas leak call that's half an hour away, I have to drop everything that I'm doing here and go respond to that gas leak call immediately, even if it takes me a couple of hours before I can come back and finish working on this furnace. And the reason these calls are top priority is because they could cause a lot of damage to property and even kill people. And as a side note, let me tell you something interesting. Both natural gas and carbon monoxide, these dangerous fumes are colorless and odorless, meaning you cannot see them, you cannot smell them. But luckily, carbon monoxide is often mixed with other fumes, which does give it a little bit of a smell. So you do smell something, something smells off. And in addition to that, most houses will have at least a few carbon monoxide detectors in them that will sound an alarm if they pick up any carbon monoxide in the house. But if the carbon monoxide detector does not sound an alarm, or maybe for some reason there is no detector at all in the house, one of the symptoms of somebody being poisoned by carbon monoxide is that they get really confused. I have an example of that for one of the carbon monoxide calls that our company responded to. Uh, the neighbor reports that the neighbor girl, these people, their neighbors, they, there's two parents and one girl, little girl. The little girl often plays with their daughter. She comes over to their house and this little girl says, hey, uh, my parents are acting really weird. They're not acting like usual. And also my head really hurts. I'm sleepy. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I just, I didn't want to stay in the house with my parents. And luckily these people, the neighbors, they kind of knew that this might be a symptom of something. So they immediately went over to the other house to check on the parents. And by the time they got there, this little girl's parents were already laying on the floor unconscious. They called 911, the first responders came, and fortunately they were able to detoxify them so there's no permanent brain damage from the carbon monoxide. This family is blessed to be alive because that girl actually went out of the house to go tell the neighbors. If she didn't come out of the house, she probably would have fell unconscious as well and the whole family would have been wiped out. So if you ever encounter a situation where somebody is acting really weird, they're groggy, they're confused, they don't know what's going on, their head really started hurting out of nowhere, and this is in the middle of winter, then quite possibly this could have something to do with carbon monoxide. By the way, if you have any stories involving carbon monoxide of your own, please do share them with the rest of us in the comments below. And as for natural gas, it smells like rotten eggs. If you ever smelled it, it has this pungent egg smell to it. And that's because they actually add odorizer to it, a chemical that makes it smell like that. If they didn't add that chemical, you would not be able to smell that gas at all. And the reason they started doing that is because back in 1937, there was a school that had a gas leak in it and nobody noticed it and the gas accumulated and eventually there was a spark and the whole thing exploded and over 200 kids died that day. After that, they made a new law that natural gas had to have this chemical added to it. That way, if there's a gas leak, people will be able to smell it. Here's an interesting thing about the natural gas though. It's only explosive in a specific ratio, which is five to 15% of the air. So for example, if there's a room that has little to no ventilation, out of 100% air, it has to be five to 15% of that air in order for it to be explosive. Which means if 30% of the air is natural gas, I could literally stand in that room and light a lighter and nothing will explode. Of course, I don't wanna try that, but whoever tested it, that's what they say five to 15%. If it's below that or over that, nothing will explode. 
So if you come into a room and there's a super strong smell of gas, you should be extra careful with that because once you start ventilating that room, that gas percentage starts to drop. And once it gets into that range, that's when it becomes explosive. The gas company that I worked for treated potential dangers really seriously. So whenever I would get out to a house to check for a gas leak, I would have to leave all my electronics in the car. Anything that could cause a spark had to stay in the car. Because once I'm inside the house, if the gas percentage is right and I get a phone call coming in, that could be enough of a little spark to ignite everything. And we were also instructed not to touch the light switches because the spark caused by the light switch could also ignite the natural gas. And by the way, all the things I'm telling you right now, if you ever call a gas company for a gas leak, they're probably gonna tell you something similar to that. Don't touch your light switches, don't call anybody, go outside and wait for the gas company person to come over. So let's go back to what do you do if you smell gas inside of your home? If whatever you're smelling, you're barely picking up, chances are this is probably nothing urgent. But if you come into the house and the smell is strong, then you probably should get out of the house right away and call the gas company and they'll give you further instructions on what to do, which is probably gonna be, don't come into the house and wait for us to get there to make sure that it's safe. And about calling your gas company, I have good news and bad news. The good news is, that they'll come out free of charge to do a gas leak check or a carbon monoxide check, or at least most companies will. If you want, you can make sure when you call them, just ask if they're gonna charge you for them coming out. But the bad news is, if they do find a leak, they will shut down your gas, preferably just without plants. For example, if there's gas leaking out by the gas valve on your water heater, they can shut off the gas going only to the water heater, but if it's a gas line inside of the house and it's one of the main gas lines, they will literally shut the gas off to the whole house and tell you to call out a plumber to get that fixed before they will come and turn that gas back on. I know that the guys that I worked with in my company, including myself, we would try to fix the problem on the spot if we could, if it's a simple fix. For example, if it's just a little fitting that needs to be tightened in order to fix that gas leak, we would just do that on the spot. But if we have to take apart a lot of gas piping to get that fixed, then we would tell you to get a plumber. Or even worse, if the pipe is in the wall or underground, then that fix could become even more problematic. So that's the bad news. Imagine if it's super cold outside and you call a gas company out for a gas leak and they turn your gas off, tell you to call a plumber and they're only gonna come back and turn it off after that gets fixed. If it's a holiday and there's no plumbers available, this can become quite a hassle. And because of that, I know I shouldn't be saying this, but if you're not smelling much gas, if it's just a tiny whiff, then maybe just call a plumber right away instead of calling the gas company, because there's a good chance that they will shut your gas off until the plumber fixes it. Whereas if you call the plumber right away, he's probably not gonna be turning anything off. But that being said, they do turn it off for your own safety. So regardless, if you smell some gas, uh, do call somebody for sure, either a plumber or a gas company. If the smell is strong, then definitely call the gas company right away. Even if they shut you off, better safe than sorry. If you know some gas leak stories of your own, it would be awesome if you could share with us in the comments below. But if you made it all the way to the end of the video, let me share some jokes with you that only people living in the United States will understand. And just a warning, these are dad jokes, so don't expect too much. So here goes the first one. What did Delaware? A New Jersey. And what did Tennessee? The same thing that Arkansas.